droids, lightsabers, characters roaming around, and a Millennium Falcon. Is there anything else we can ask for? For attention, please. What is shaking, everyone? Welcome back. Galaxy's Edge has been open for just a couple of days, and for the majority of those days, I have been watching live streams, different vlogs, reading different articles about the new land. So we're going to break down some of my highlights, some of my lowlights, and giving our first opinion on this brand new land. First and foremost, I want to give a big thank you and a big round of applause to all of the cast members, all of the Imagineers, everyone who worked on Galaxy's Edge and made it a reality, who brought us this fully immersive fully themed land. It is truly something to see. From the moment you step in, you are escaping reality. And I've said this multiple, multiple times. Disneyland is a place to escape reality, to, to put your real life problems, your real life behind you and escape reality. And Galaxy's Edge takes that a step further. Guests were commenting that they forgot they were in Disneyland. It truly separated itself from the park and even further from reality. So once again, thank you to all the Imagineers, all of the cast members that are making this possible and you know, are who, who are providing this awesome, awesome land into this beautiful theme park. Now I don't want to draw this out. I don't want to dive too far into everything because I have not seen, I have not seen Galaxy's Edge in person just yet. In just a couple of days on Sunday, we will be in Galaxy's Edge to get a full perspective of this new land, this new beautiful, Beautiful land. I, I just ha I can't express how beautiful and immaculate this new land is. But walking, uh, watching videos of just guests walking around, it's it's overwhelming. I mean, guests are crying. It's just that immersive. You are transporting into a universe that a lot of us grew up loving. No matter what generation you are, whether you grew up with the original trilogy, if you grew up with the prequels, if you grew up with the latest set of Star Wars film. This land is built for you. And it's even people that aren't fans of Star Wars are enjoying this land just because of how immersive it is. Now, the biggest thing or the most, the most thing I wasn't expecting, I should say, the, the biggest thing I wasn't expecting was that characters are just roaming around. And I love this. They're not just setting up for pictures and standing there, hey, hey, take your pictures, rush you through in 30 seconds. But Ray, for example, is truly just meandering around in the resistance side of Galaxy's Edge. She's just walking around. Chewie, same thing. He's just walking around. They interact with you, they keep moving, and it's all part of a storyline. Ray doesn't break character. She is going to try to tell you secrets to hide from the First Order. It, that's something I really did not expect to happen, is seeing these characters walk around. Another one is Kyro, Kylo Ren walks around the first order, first order section. He just walks around. You'll hear him talking with stormtroopers. Stormtroopers will talk back. Stormtroopers just walk around. Other first order members just stroll around and they will come up and interrogate you and try to get you to break the secrets of the resistance. There's a spy that is walking around and that's a huge part. Different, cat, different members, whether it's from the resistance or from the first order, will ask you about this spy if you have seen this spy. So it's fully immersive just from the character perspective, not from the buildings, not from the attractions, not from the food, none of that, but from the characters walking around. And that is one thing that I am so excited to see and so excited to experience. I love talking to real life characters. It's hard for me to interact with like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, you know, masked characters. It's just hard for me to judge what they're trying to say back to me, but I want to have a conversation with Ray. I want to be interrogated by stormtroopers. I want to be interrogated by Kylo Ren. And I think this just adds to that full immersion that Disney was going for with Galaxy's Edge. Now we'll quickly touch on Smuggler's Run, the Millennium Falcon attraction. Again, I have not ridden it and I have not watched any videos in regards to the queue or in, in regards to the ride itself. I am trying to go spoiler free into the attraction. Now, if you follow along here, we've done videos breaking down the queue line. So I know what to expect but I don't know what all of it looks like. I'm trying to avoid it, but reviews are out and reviews are great. 
Many people are saying it's a combination of Star Tours and Mission Space, where it's a simulator mixed with that Mission Space, you press buttons, you control everything. Except this is taking it a notch further where you can highly damage your vehicle. Mission Space, you hit the wrong button, it just kind of flashes a bunch and nothing really changes. You might get a little warning saying, hey, hey, you're not doing this, but it's not really affecting your, your experience or your trip. Each mistake or each action that is positive does result in something else. If you forget to hit hyperspace, if you forget hyperdrive, and you forget to take off, you're gonna have a whole different cutscene. It's, it's gonna change your story. So like I said, the jury's out, everybody loves it, at least from what I've heard. So I'm really excited to, to, to check that out. And I, I think I'm just more excited to see the queue line because I wanna see the state-of-the-art animatronic in Hondo in person. So now on to food. Food I heard is kind of hit and miss. Some of it is a little funky. I, I do know you have to try the turkey jerky. I will definitely be trying some turkey jerky. And people say it doesn't taste like turkey. It doesn't really taste like jerky. So, it, it, but they say it tastes good. They say it's a little gamey, it's a little smoky. They say it's really good. But some people that I saw ate the breakfast items and one item is just like a breakfast wrap and it literally just has a breakfast sausage in the middle of it. And some people were kind of thrown off by that. I know I probably love it, but some people were thrown off and the galactic oats, I think is what, the, what it's called, the, basically the oatmeal parfait. It's just oatmeal topped with some fruit. The oatmeal is almost like a strawberry oatmeal. Ashley said if we are able to get that, I mean our reservation is at 11, so we probably will miss out on breakfast. But from what I saw, some people were a little turned off by the funkiness or the just a different kind of oatmeal they're not used to. But overall, from what I've seen, the food is amazing. It's just some of it requires a little bit different, a little bit different palate. And the cantina, the drinks, everybody's saying are definitely potent. They're a little more expensive. They're more 14, 15, 17. There's drinks up to 42 if you want to get the souvenir mug. There's one that's like 75, it's a beer flight. You get the little stand that it comes in. But the, the hard alcohol, the, the mixed drinks, they say do pack a punch. So you're definitely getting your money's worth in the cantina. Because that was one thing I was a little worried about. High prices, maybe not, might not have the, the alcohol to live up to that price. But everybody is saying that is definitely not the case. You definitely get your money's worth with these drinks. Now speaking of the cantina and the rest of the attractions as a whole, the cantina has one of the longest lines to get in out of the whole land. And this includes the Millennium Falcon, the Droid Depot, the Savvy's Workshop, and the cantina. The cantina is almost number one, might be a hair behind Savvy's Workshop where you build the lightsaber. Now, one of the live streams I was watching, they completely stopped it. They blocked off the line and said, everybody go away. We're closing the cantina until it disperses, until it empties out which I think is a great idea. I love that concept. One of my old jobs, we used to do that and it always it worked phenomenally that way. And they just kind of told guests, hey, if you want to come back for the cantina, just go hang out in the first order section and we'll kind of wave you down when we're gonna open it up again. And that's what they did. They waved out down the guests and the guests came running over and they waited maybe a half hour to get in. But the cantina is something that is gonna be very popular. People want to get in and it doesn't help that they serve alcohol and it's never been done in Disneyland outside of D20 or outside of Club 33. So that's a little added thing too that people want to do. Like, hey, I had a drink. I had an alcoholic beverage in Disneyland. So just keep in mind, if you want to see the cantina, I highly, highly recommend doing that first. Or if you're in the morning group, if you're in the, that eight to 12 reservation window, you might get away with waiting a little while and then coming back to it. But don't wait too long because the line will definitely get long. So if Cantina is number one in terms of queue length, then the lightsaber experience over at Savvy's Workshop is definitely number two. That line was almost an hour and a half to two hours throughout the time periods that I watched, whether it be live stream or vlogs. It was long no matter what. Now, like I said, the Cantina reached, reached a time limit of two hours. Savvy's Workshop definitely hit that mark. So, it's another one. If you are going in and you want to hit it, make sure you hit it first. Now, there is that kind of loophole where if you catch it at the, at, toward the end of your reservation and you're in line, you will be able to go through and finish your experience. They won't just kick you out of line. But if you're trying to run up right at 12, if you have that 8 to 12 window, you run up right at 12, they're going to stop you and send you away. 
So just a heads up, if you can show up 15 minutes before and it's an hour wait, you're going to be able to get in to the lightsaber experience in Savvy's workshop. So just a heads up, Cantina is definitely a, a first thing to do. The lightsaber experience is definitely, definitely one of the first things you want to do inside of Galaxy's Edge. So with the Cantina and Savvy's workshop out of the way, that really only leaves the Droid Depot and Smuggler's Run. Now Smuggler's Run did hit wait times of 90 minutes early on in the 8 to 12 block. But about halfway through, there were times where it only hit 15 to 20 minutes. And when I saw that, I was completely like, it blew my mind. I was not expecting that at all. So Smuggler's Run is definitely something you, I mean, everyone's going to want to do it. But you can almost manipulate it a little and wait it out. And again, if you end up waiting too long and it jumps back up to an hour and a half, you just hop back in a half hour before your time, you will be able to ride the attraction. Now the Droid Depot. That line really was never that long. It, it was pretty much a walk up. You wait in a little bit of queue line, just like you would be almost to check out at any of the Disney, at the popular Disney stores. So it was only about a 10 to 15 minute wait. Now at the end of each block is when the line got longer. The line reached about 45 minutes with about a half hour to go in each block that I watched, which was the eight to 12, in the 11 to 3 block. The last half hour is when the Droid Depot really got busy. So again, if you want to stand in those lines towards your end of your block to get your Droid, cool, go for it. But I would recommend getting your Droid a little bit earlier where you can literally walk up, spend 15, 10, 15 minutes, and you're in and out. So like I said, ranking, Cantina is probably number one, the one thing that you want to hit. If you want to see it, if that's one of your top things you want to see, hit that first. Then you have the lightsabers, which is right next to it. If Right below it or right next to it. Those two are pretty close. Then you have Smuggler's Run and the Droid Depot. Droid Depot, you could definitely save for just a, oh, hey, what are we doing right now? We're walking around. Okay, let's go get our Droid. That, that's the bottom of the four major things that you can see inside of Galaxy's Edge. Now, I've talked about the good, and there's only really one or two not even bad things that I can say about this. The first one is the land does definitely seem to be incomplete. Again, once I'm there, I'll be able to feel if it truly does kind of feel separated, where Rise is completely shut down and everything else is open, where it kind of feels split in half. A lot of guests were commenting that, hey, this side of the park seems cut off. It seems like it's not even part of Galaxy's Edge. So that's my first little kind of caveat. I could go and it's completely different. And I love it all. So that, that's a little in-betweener. The second one is, is the overlapping. Yes, it's only an hour, but it could really affect wait times for the next group of people. Now, Millennium, the Smuggler's Run, I didn't really see it get impacted. It was about 70 minutes, like I said, at the 11 o'clock hour, which is when the first, group come, the first group is about to leave and the second group is coming in. It was about 70 minutes. Well, I checked it at about 1230. So now, basically, most of the first group should be out. The second group is all in. And it was still about 60 minutes. Shortly thereafter, by about 1.15, 1.30, it was down to a half hour. So the overlap isn't really an issue, but I could see where it might cause problems if everybody is hopping into lines with, let's say, 15, 20 minutes left in their block. That's where I can see some of these wait times getting really long and kind of screwing it up for every further group. The longer you get down, the more it's going to screw up. So those are my two little cons I guess you could say that aren't massive they're, they're not gonna horribly affect your your experience inside of Galaxy's Edge so overall Galaxy's Edge so far is a massive hit everybody is loving it and like I said I haven't been there yet and this is just watching it and the more I watch it the more I wish next Sunday was here because I just want to get in I want to walk around I want to build a droid I want to ride smugglers run I want to eat the food I want to just I want to see it all I want to experience it and that is what Disney, Disney created this for this reason. They wanted people to want to see this. They wanted to create some emotions to it. And it's definitely, at least so far, that is definitely coming true. So as we wind down this video, I just wanted to give you a quick little rundown of our plan. And it might be able to help you structure how you're going to build your, or utilize your reservation time. When we first get in, we have the 11 to 3 o'clock period. So when we first get in, we are heading straight over to Smuggler's Run. We're going to knock that out and get it out of the way because there's that off chance where later on, two hours later, it's down to 15 minutes. I'm going to hop on and do it again. I want to do 
all the different, I want to be a pilot, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a gunner. Ashley just wants to pilot the stupid thing. She doesn't want to do anything else but pilot it. So, I'm going to do that first, get it out of the way. Then I'm going to probably head over to the Droid Depot, or I might wait a little bit, but I definitely want to build a Droid, and the more and more I show Ashley, the more and more she wants to build her own. We were going to build one together, now it's looking like she's going to get an R series and I'm going to get a BB series. So again, Disney's doing their job. It's making us want more. So we are going to do, like I said, we're going to do Smuggler's Run. We're going to do the Droid Depot. Now we're going to pass on the lightsabers for now. We're going to be back in August and hopefully it might die down a little. Things could get ironed out. They might expand capacity a little, make the line go smoother. And that is when we are going to hopefully build a lightsaber. Now I want to see the food. I want to try some of the food. If you've seen any of our videos in our last few trips, it's all been about food. So I want to try the different food. I want to try the different items. And most of all, I want to experience the characters. I want to experience the environment. I want to take in the sounds. You know, guess you're saying the pod of the bad guy in the first episode, episode one, when they're doing the pod race, I can't remember the bad guy's name, but when they're doing the pod races and his ship kind of goes the boom, 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 boom. You hear that going over the top of you. The buildings shake. You really feel like there's pods and, and ships going over you. I want to, I could just sit there and inv just take it all in. And that is probably what I just want to experience the most. It's just the over the top theming, pulling me into this universe, taking me away to Batu, Take me to Black Spire Outpost. So in a nutshell, like I said, we're hitting Smuggler's Run, the Droid Depot, where we'll probably build two droids, if we can, we'll squeeze into the cantina. If we can kind of find that little loophole where they close it and they say, hey, we're coming back and we squeeze it right in. So we might see the cantina, but otherwise I want to try the food and I want to be fully immersed and take it all in. That's my one note for this whole video. If you do have a reservation, enjoy it. Take it all in. Don't look at the lions. And I keep telling Ashley this, don't look at the lions as a negative. Take it as a chance to stand there Look around, hear the sights and sound, hear the animals, hear the ships, see the characters walking around, see them interacting, watch guests interacting. I can't tell you how many guests I've seen interacting with other guests and sharing their experiences, sharing their, their drinks, sharing their food. It, it really, it was almost a humbling feeling what Galaxy's Edge is doing to people. You don't see it too often in today's world. Everyone's kind of sticks to themselves, me, me, me. But Star Wars and Galaxy's Edge is uniting people, and I love seeing that. And again, that's something that I want to see, and I can't wait to experience next Sunday, June 9th, when we go. So that's my little first impression. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when other videos like this or other park adventure videos are uploaded. And as always, if you're at any of the Disney parks, tell Mickey and Minnie I say hi. And again, June 9th is when we will be in Galaxy's Edge. If you are going, let me know. We'd love to hang out. We'd love to maybe go to the cantina together, get a big group of people. Maybe we'll all go and ride the Millennium Falcon. They say if you know everybody in your group, it makes the experience better. So if you are going Sunday, June 9th, please let me know. I would love to hang out. We can talk and experience this gorgeous, gorgeous land together. And I will see you all a little later.